I love seeing Africa. Yeah, I do too. Like, the kid in me is just feeling like she's been lied to. What's good, y'all? It's the Doom Shats React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, C? Today, we are back with another American reaction. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us and, and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 100K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into this video. What's up, guys, and welcome to Kampala, that's in the pearl of Africa, Uganda, and go. the city of Seven Hills, and a lot of Boda Bodas. So, let me show Ooh, you guys. That's a nice around. house. That's a house? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, guys, to Kampala, the capital city of Uganda. It took me a 15 hour bus ride all the way from Nairobi, Kenya, to oh, get here, and it was a hectic 15 yeah, hours of my life. You. But hey, I guess that's what you get when you're trying to save money. The bus trip cost me $30 one way. A uh, flight would have cost me $150. So I, I checked into my accommodation Screw over <laughs> here. I knocked out and it's currently midday right now. So I want to go out and start exploring what the city has to offer. But before we do that, I want to show you the accommodation. It costs $35 and I found it on an app called Tubio. It's kind of like the East African version of Airbnb. So when you come in here, it's a container home and right now it's a mess, but it's pretty straightforward. So you have a desk, a clean bed, and when you come it's around here, you have it's a clean matters. shower it's a and nice toilet. Shower. Clean. And this is where I'm going to be staying for the next three nights. It's a huge city. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody on us. It's a lot of be bikes. a full day oh. here in the city, and we're starting it off with a grand city tour. So right now, I'm at the Independence Monument, and to get here, well, to get around in anywhere in Kampala, you have to use a Boda Boda, which means motorbike, oh. because there's just so much traffic in the city and it's so chaotic. The motorbike scene here reminds really me of Bangkok in Thailand. There's it's motorbikes like everybody outside, everywhere. Though. They're all zooming past each other. From what we can see, it looks more organized than some other places that we have seen, you know, with the bikes. Yeah, it look like they, they're getting what they got to get with the bikes. Yeah. It's quick. I love bikes. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know if I'd be riding on them. You wouldn't ride on my I, bike? I, no. Mm -mm. I tried it when I was younger. I don't like the vibration. Mm -mm. Okay, okay. You can ride on my bike. You go ride on my bike. You can tell people this. And me, Cha. I ain't ride on my bike. Yeah. Ding, ding. <laughs> Go slow, two miles per hour. Uh, right. And cutting each other like mad. I wouldn't recommend being on a bike, but you kind of have to because if you want to save time getting around the city, then the only way you can do that on is by bike. being on a bike. Yeah. This here is Tuaha. He's going to be our guide for the city. Hey man, how's it going? In this city tour, we're going to go to a couple of different places and we're starting off with exploring the different monuments here in the city. So right now we're in front of the Independence Monument and as you can see over here, basically this is a human tied up in bandages signifying the time of uh, when they were under colonization. And then wow. right up there is a kid who is emerging showing that Uganda is now free. Wow. And the monument like looks super cool. Love the art, man. That's amazing. So right now we've come to a place here in downtown called China Mwandu, and over here you get uh, the cheapest street food in all of Uganda. So apparently you can get a whole buffet for just less than a dollar. Basically, oh, wow. China Mwandu means uh, widows where a long time ago when people were widows, they would come here to try and sell stuff to get by. And right now it's a street food joint here in downtown. It's so chaotic. There's music, sounds, people all around us. And here's the thing. Usually in a place like this, I would never film. But luckily our guide has connections. He knows people around the area. 
So we're going to be trying out a local dish here called a Rolex. Basically, it's a number of chapatis, which is like flatbread mixed with eggs, tomatoes, so a number of different vegetables. It has a lot of variations. Sometimes you can find one where there's one where I even put sausages in ketchup. Oh wow! So basically, beef, just yeah. mixing up everything. But the basic thing is uh, eggs and chapati. All right, mm. let's try it out. We've just got our Rolex over here. Beautiful presentation in like these rolls. Presentation. Ah, it's hot. I'm glad he said that. Beautiful presentation presentation because mm -hmm. wife here my beautiful wife she always says that you know presentation is key when you're serving yeah. a dish you know what yeah. i'm saying especially when you want to show that hospitality you don't want to just throw a meal together and right. just serve it to them people want to not feel so you know welcome right you eat with your eyes first so that, to me that yeah. kind of look like i don't know i just got a glance of it but mm -hmm. it kind of looks like um a panini but with croissant type bread. It's giving me flaky bread. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when yeah. you bite into it, mm. that's some good stuff. I was not see. expecting a Rolex to be this good. It reminds me the of Rolex. one of the dishes we make at the Rolex. Rolex. Called Franca and egg. The Rolex. What video was that when we, when uh, we learned about that? I remember it. I remember it. I remember. Okay, I do. Okay, so we already learned about the Rolex. We did. He didn't call it that when it was cooking it, though. Right. They had another name for it, right. but yeah, this is this is the it meal right here. Yeah, we know about the Rolex. It tastes the same. We are going to learn how to speak some Luganda, which is one of the languages spoke in Luganda. Uganda. This here is Nabs, who's a food blogger and travel blogger. So how do you say thank you in Luganda? You can say way Way wale. Way wale. Way Yeah. Way wale. Okay, and then there was another word you were telling me. It was a really difficult one. Nail zizza. Nail zizza. Nail zizza. Nail zizza. Nail zizza. One of the best things about traveling is interacting with the local people. But the more that I've started traveling, I've found myself in situations like this. And that is why I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Lingo Pie. This year onward, I'm looking to travel to more and more countries. And because of that, I'm starting to invest more time in learning new languages. And Lingo Pie is helping me with exactly that. Mi nombre es Rajveer. Me gusta hacer vlogs de viajes y aprender español. Lingopie is a video on demand platform that offers local TV shows and movies in Spanish, Portuguese, German, Italian, Japanese, wow. Korean, and so many more, and they're still adding more languages. You can watch content based on the language you want to learn and view subtitles in both your own language and the local language. While watching, if you get stuck on any word or phrase, you can instantly click on that word and it'll give you a translation. Then the words will be added to flashcards, which you can later review until you're comfortable with them. For me, I like to slow down the videos to zero point five speed so that I can hear pronunciations and enunciations. I've always found languages difficult and this for me is such a fun way to learn and Lingopi has a lot of other features which can allow you to immerse yourself into a language that you're learning. So if you want to try it out for yourself and learn a new language then make sure to follow the link in the bio. You'll get a free trial and 65% off your subscription so make sure to take advantage of that. Let's get back into the video. <laughs> You guys, we've been walking through downtown Kampala and there's just so much happening. It's like sensory overload. Noise everywhere, <laughs> music everywhere, people trying to sell stuff. Loads of motorbikes, loads of people walking. So we have just made it to this mosque here in Kampala. It's called Gaddafi Mosque and it is so beautiful. Oh, that's mm. Our guy Twaha mm -hmm. was saying that this mosque was built on a hill that had a lot of impalas. And so the name Kampala originates from this hill, from this place. He also said that if you come to Kampala and you don't visit this mosque, then did you even come to Kampala? Come yeah. into one of the prayer halls and this place that is, really is nice. so majestic. So I'm not even talking that loud, but you can hear my echo. Right above me, there's this dome that's so beautiful. There's a gigantic chandelier and all this beautiful artwork on the roof. I don't think I've seen anything this beautiful in my life. Listen to this. Oh, that's very From quiet. down, I yeah. thought this was paint, but it's actually all carvings. Wait, so even on the roof, it's all carved? That's a lot of work. Ooh. So I've just been told that this mosque is the largest in all of East Africa, and it's the highest point in Kampala. And mm. now we're about to go even higher because we're going to go to the top of that. 272 stairs to the top. Uh, this minaret is about 45 meters high. We'll be having the best 360 degree view of Kampala city. Ooh. Ooh. No elevator. 
So we're gonna hike all oh. the way. Yeah, one way up, one way down. He's just yeah. taking long trips, huh? Okay. I think about 12 floors up. And I. <sighs> Chad. This is workout. Mm -hmm. This is going to be my 272nd step. Whew. We've made it at the top. And welcome, guys. Uh, I'll to look down. The highest point in all of Kampala. Here we are. Yeah, you gotta earn that though. You gotta yeah. make that walk. It's a nice sight. It is. I hate this. That was insane. I don't know how comfortable I am with bikes here in Kampala. It's like the most questionable thing that you can do here. We have come to the king's palace. The king doesn't live here. He actually moved. I love seeing Africa. Yeah, I do too. Like the kid in me is just feeling like she's been lied to mm. and seeing Africa for what it really is, mm. the buildings. Man, I just, I love seeing Africa. I do. I feel like it's, it's giving back to you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's coming all back to you. It's like a, it's like annoying that you knew, mm -hmm. but it has been, you know, shadowed from you, from, from right, your memory. Like, think about it. There's no other place in the world that we have been told such negative things about. True, true you stuff. Know? Like, I can't think of no place. True stuff, true stuff. Wow. That's a bar. Out of the palace. This palace was attacked in 1966, and uh, a lot of blood was shed here. Oh. That's why the current king of Buganda does not live here. He only uses it as an office. So this is the palace, which is his office. This is called the King's Mile. It's a straight road. This roundabout right over here has been split into two, because that's the King's Mile. The king doesn't take any turns. So when he's on official business, he comes to the office, drives straight through the parliament. That was about eight hours of walking around Kampala city and touring the whole place. I'm so tired. And now we're ending it off with uh, trying a very popular dish over here called Luwombo. We're at a local restaurant over here here called Haji Seban 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 Chai Seban Chai like some complex names mm -hmm. Lumombo has arrived and basically it's meat that has been cooked in this sort of tomato paste sauce and it's cooked inside a banana leaf and banana so when they served it to us they opened up the banana leaf and it steamed out all so this unique. beautiful aroma but the, so, but the tomato sauce though with that yeah we so do that exactly <clears throat> um there's a dish what do we call it we wrap the meat up with cabbage leaves oh man and what tomato is that paste. called we what's that called y'all hey called? i know somebody know what that's called like drop that in the comic section but i I, yeah, I, I, can, usually, I can see it. Like, we usually I know exactly eat it is. for New Year's. Mm -hmm. Cabbage with meat and tomato paste. And they in, put a in, stick, of stick it. a, uh, a Q-tip. Yeah, right, to keep it together. Right in the middle of it, and you cook it, and it's Yeah, I forgot really what it's good. called. Man, I can't tell the last time I had that. It's the wow. same thing. Yeah. Apparently, this was a meal that was created specially for the king by his chef. No, this? I know what it's called. Cabbage rolls. Yeah. Cabbage roll. We had big pots and it was yeah. like served so many people. Like your plate would be full. Mm hmm. Mm. Yes. The more and more videos we react to about Africa, the cuisine, the culture, mm -hmm. all of that, we're seeing so many different similarities, especially in the way that we cook. A lot of times when people um, hear of a foreign food to them, they, they would say, oh, I don't want to eat that. Oh, that's nasty. Right. But they don't realize that we basically cook the same way. It's just the same things. It's just prepared differently. Yes, prepared differently. That's the key right there. Cabbage rolls, y'all. So if you haven't tried it, look yes. into it. Is like heaven on a plate. The salt is just going through and through. You can taste the tomato. Wow, this is beautiful. <laughs> Welcome to day three here in Kampala City. So right now again with the, the Dubai app, we booked a honey harvesting experience. And right now we're with honey harvesting here. Hello. And we've already started the go tour to with the driving mm -hmm. around in style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have arrived to Hamid's workshop and this is where he keeps his bees. So when we got in here, I was like, 
wait so where are all the bees when you approach something in a really open minded manner you can you can make it do anything yay <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go harvest some bees. I look like a Martian. <laughs> right, when you're entering the beehive, you need to have some tools. What is needed? Of course, the smoke truck. The smoke helps giving the bees an alert from, oh my God, oh my God, there's fire. And then they go and start drinking honey, sipping honey, and then it makes their bellies full. So it's more difficult for them to sting. Say Bismillah, you greet the bees, say good morning, Salaam Alaikum. Pop them with some little puff puffness. You can see the way they're very calm because we're calm with them. Yeah. Now what we're going to do is shake like this. Yo, you're a professional. Mm. Flying up in the air with some sugar water. Mm -hmm. Me, I'll be like... So yeah, like he got nothing, <laughs> nothing on. This right over here is a comb that has a mixture of ready honey. Um, honey that they're trying to remove the moisture from to make it ready and then some eggs of the bees. So the white part is where the honey is actually ready. <laughs> I like how we're all protected and dressed up and then there's him who's casually just lifting the bees. So if you ask an architect what is the most efficient use of space in any place, they won't tell you circle or triangle or square or rectangle, they'll tell you hexagon. How do the bees know that? That's the same one. I'm telling you something which is very incredible and the more you get to know, the more you really appreciate the value of a honeybee in this life. So this is the queen bee. It's a caniolus, black beauty as Hamid calls it. It's so beautiful. It has a long abdomen. She's laying an egg on your hand, bro. Oh my God, bro, she's laying an egg <laughs> on your hand. Look at that. She's laying an egg. They call me the bee whisperer. So we're done mm. with the harvesting. The next step is to enjoy the fruit of our harvest. And so now we're in one of the offices and Hamid is showing us the products of the harvest. This is the honey that we harvested just now. They make candles, they make, it's called propylene. Skin great care for flu and honey. sinus issues. The best part, the best part. Ooh. The best part. Wow. Another one, so please. Sweet. Thank you so much. So we've ended off the experience with a goodie bag. This experience, 10 out of 10, 100% recommend. It's really amazing to see how Hamid is so passionate about the bees. And making and harvesting bees in an urban environment like this, it's insane. So we have just arrived to a place that smells like chocolate everywhere. Mm. That's because we've come to a chocolate factory stroke cafe. It's called Latitude Craft Chocolate and we're going to learn how to make chocolate. And I'm actually surprised to have been able to find an experience like this available here in Kampala. Let's check it out. I'm Sonia from Latitude Craft Chocolate and how much do you know about chocolate? So now we're about to enter where they're going to process the chocolate and everything. Just like the bee place, we kind of have to put on some attire. And this, what am I going to do for my PA? And then a lot of people probably don't even know exactly where chocolate comes from. Yeah, and it looks disgusting when they first <laughs> it open it. It looks yeah. so disgusting, like, uh-uh. Again just so unique you know our world is mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so definitely but you don't see no i, I about to say something crazy i, I don't know but uh, mm -hmm. i don't like the way that it looks before they process it yeah oh. my show it yeah. so we've learned how to make the chocolate which is a really interesting process now they have all these different flavors that we're going to be tasting one by one. I feel like I'm in paradise right now. This is craft chocolate and not mass production chocolate. Craft chocolate goes through the bean to bark process mm -hmm. where we get the cocoa beans, roast them, refine them, ferment them again in the block from the chisel and then have this. So all these chocolate bars you'll notice have names of local places. Basically each name is where the cocoa beans have been uh, sourced from. I wasn't oh, expecting wow. like the chocolate to taste like this. It, it has more of like that uh, cocoa bean um, flavor to it rather than just sugar and milk. That's Guys, good. look at this bar. Wait, wait, listen to this. And look at that shine. Mm. Oh. Cheers to Ugandan chocolate. Hey, look.
Just keep it simple, man. People yeah. really taking it from the source and they doing exactly what they need to do with it yes. without adding any other extra yes, product to yes. it. And that's what keeps it rich and natural. So Right, right. I am ready to taste some African chocolate. Man. <laughs> right. Especially since they said that our chocolate tastes like vomit to them. Yeah, we got all that extra um stuff going on in there. <laughs> like the ingredients is long. Yeah. Long. Yeah. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Like this video, subscribe. Turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks. If you would like to support the channel that way, as well as our join feature to become a VIP member of the channel, send in your reaction request through our description box below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.